So now I'll introduce Aurora Zhao. Okay, so it's with great pleasure that I introduce my colleague, Dr. Chow, who I work with both here at SDSC and over at the Australian War College. So I want to start this introduction by giving a few highlights of Dr. Chow's career. So Dr. Chow is a lecturer in professional military education with a research background in social psychology. Recently, she won an ANU linkage uh, for learning and teaching grant. Last year, her Grand Challenges team was in the top four, which is very impressive. I was very impressed that you took on all of this extra work on top of what we normally do. And the project was called Restoring Climate with Enhanced Earth Systems. In 2016, she also won the VC's Award for Excellent in Education Programs that Enhance Learning. So as you can gather from this information, she is a skilled educator and someone that supports both students and staff in their learning and teaching. And I know she's helped me a number of times myself. So she's a key member of the team at the Australian War College. So in preparation for this event, uh, I asked Dr. Chow uh, what her academic origin story was. So we talked about Marvel characters, and I said, if you were a Marvel character but an academic, what would your origin story be? How did, you find, uh, how did we find ourselves in that moment discussing her work as a lecturer in professional military education? And what we ended up discussing was how career paths aren't linear, and that perhaps this would act as a key takeaway from the introduction. So I'm going to weave together her story with this um, point about how career paths aren't linear. And what we see from Dr. Chow's own path is how a person's research interests can be developed and applied in multiple ways. Dr. Chow said a starting point for her thinking about her career was what was interesting to her and what was also useful to society. Her background, as I said, is in social psychology. In particular, she is interested in group identity and how group identity shapes and defines individual identity. And you might want to explain it better than I have later. <laughs> OK. So ultimately, she is interested in how people behave and why. And secondly, she's also interested in pedagogy, so tutoring, lecturing, and higher education. She began to hone these skills working with postgraduate students um, who were working on their own teaching development. So when the job at SDSC was advertised, she realized that her interest in identity enabled her to think about how one's military identity might shape the way that they learn. She places the student's identity in context of this military identity and culture. Furthermore, she couples this interest in identity with her experience in pedagogy to develop innovative approaches to learning. And here, for example, we see uh, back to the recent project I mentioned uh, that prepares continuing education students for postgraduate study shine through. Finally, I want to end with a quote that Dr. Chow may or may not pick up in her own talk, which was, quote, success isn't defined by being one thing. Don't narrowly define who you are, end quote. Dr. Chow, 2019. <laughs> so that's the historian in me. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to w welcome you to speak. I'm not sure I recognize that person that just got talked about. So like Megan said, I'm fascinated by how um, who we are affects how we think and then how we behave. And um, I think in so many contexts, we get value from having diversity. Um, diversity in thought in approaching problems. So it's not a particularly contentious idea to think that we need uh, interdisciplinary approaches to solving problems. As a person with a background in psychology and a civilian person working in a context of um, uniformed military uh, ADF personnel, I often have really wonderful opportunities to have people like myself and people with very different backgrounds, different identities, and different ways of approaching problems, interacting with each other and learning from each other. So sometimes what seems quite normal to me seems quite strange to the people around me and vice versa. And I really treasure these opportunities because we can learn from each other. 
Um, there was a time, an occasion a couple years ago, um, some of the staff at the War College were invited to tour the War Memorial Annex, which is basically a bunch of giant warehouses filled with tanks and trucks and aircraft, missiles, things like that. Not my usual thing. And they invited me to go, and I was really um, happy to take that opportunity. And so we, we spent the whole morning doing this, looking at these things, and, and then we all went out to lunch, and, and one of the officers asked me, so what'd you think? And I said, oh my, that was really hard. That was really sad. He said, oh, what do you mean? I said, oh, I just spent the whole morning thinking about the boys that were in those trucks and in those airplanes and they didn't go home and what happened to the people that they didn't go home to and how did those people carry on? And, and the look on his face made it very clear to me that that's not what he had spent the morning thinking about when we were walking around these, these giant warehouses. And that was one of those occasions where our different identities are made us think differently and then we could learn from each other and he could say wow why did you think that and I sort of could say oh well, what did you spend the morning <laughs> thinking about and, and, and they were very different and that's great we need different brains looking at the same stimulus and drawing different conclusions and so it won't surprise you that I apply that same logic to this topic of women in international security studies. Um, certainly gender isn't the only identity that influences the way that we, that we look at things, um, certainly not in, in the area of security studies. Dif we need people from different disciplines, we need people from different countries, we need all kinds of diversity. But I don't think it's any more contentious to talk about having gender diversity than it is any of those other types of diversity because all of them boil down to the same thing. We need different brains looking at, different, looking at the same problem to draw different conclusions. And it makes me think of what Evelyn said at the very beginning about how the problems that we're looking at are getting so much more complex and we need all the best brains. <laughs>